soap out of horse chestnuts. If you're anything like me as a kid, maybe even as an adult, you would roam around picking up horse chestnuts and you'd pick them up off the ground just because they're beautiful and like shiny and iridescent when they're fresh and wet and have just fallen from the trees. They have kind of a harder outer casing that usually just cracks as they hit the ground. And they're not super spiky like the edible chestnuts. You make, want to make sure that you're not mixing up your chestnuts. We're going to be working with horse chestnuts. These are the ones that contain saponins, which is the plant-derived compound that is making these into soap. So basically, if you crush these up and let them sit in some warm water, you'll be able to release the saponins, and that is what's going to create that nice lather, and it's what's going to pull the grease and grime off of your clothing. So, head out into the wilderness, gather yourself some horse chestnuts, probably a lot, if you're wanting to have laundry soap for the year. And then what you're going to do is you need to find a way to crush or cut them up. When they're nice and wet and soft, you can use a knife or you can even use a hammer to smash them into pieces. The smaller the pieces, um, the more quickly you'll be able to extract the saponins. I used a Vitamix and it's really convenient. I actually dried these out for a couple weeks before even sticking them in the Vitamix and it was still able to handle the hardness of the nut, but I don't really recommend doing that unless you have a high powered blender that's up for the task of making nut butters and those types of things. Um, otherwise, feel free to just smash them or cut them into little bits. So what I did was I chucked a couple of these in the Vitamix and ground them up. Um, go ahead and grind them up until they're about the consistency of breadcrumbs or the size of breadcrumbs. So even though I had my horse chestnuts sitting on a tray and drying for a few weeks, they're still a little bit moist on the inside when I ground them up in the Vitamix. It's really important that no matter what method you use, you fully dehydrate your nuts before storing them. Um, you can store them in a jar indefinitely after that, but if you leave damp nuts in a jar, they're going to go rancid and you're not going to have the laundry soap that you were going for. So what I've done is just spread mine out on some wax paper or parchment paper on a cookie sheet and set it on the lowest setting in your oven and you can dry them out that way. Most people say use four to five conkers per load of laundry. So I put five in the Vitamix, ground it up, and it came out to be about one cup. And I poured that into a mason jar. I poured two cups of hot water, just having been boiled over top of it. And then you just leave it for 10 to 20 minutes and the saponins will be released and you'll notice that the water will turn kind of this murky color. So the bigger your chunks are, the longer you're gonna have to let it sit in water. So if you've got big slices, or you've just smashed them a little bit, you might need to let them sit overnight, or for half an hour to an hour. I found that 10 to 20 minutes is totally sufficient if you've really ground them up into a fine powder. And that suits my lifestyle because I'm generally not thinking about doing the laundry the next day, and I just want something that can work fairly quick. Hot water is going to help release the saponins quicker than cold water. So I poured water that had just boiled over these, and I've heard that you can actually just throw some of this stuff into a laundry bag and the wash. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's a fine mesh so you don't get particles on your clothes, um, and just toss it in there and use it that way. But I'm imagining that that probably works best on a hot or a warm cycle so that the water really helps to agitate it and release those saponins. If you're doing the soaking method and not the mesh bag method, you're gonna to need to strain the liquid away from the nuts. So I'm using this Bodum Coffee Press, keeping in mind that this particular one is not to be used for my coffee or tea because I'm using it for the laundry detergent, which is um, not edible and toxic to humans. Okay. Use our finished product. It's kind of beautiful. My first straining looks like this. It's got a little bit of a milky yellowish color to it. Uh, some people have questioned whether or not this might stain white fabrics. I don't really know because I don't have a lot of white things for good reason. But um, I have not been able to find that anyone has proven or disproved that. If you're worried about it, you can just use your first batch on colored clothing instead of white. 
The great thing is you can make um, two or three loads of this out of one batch of nuts. You can actually re-steep this two to three times. Each time it's gonna have a little bit less of that yellowy color. So if you have a lot of laundry to do, then that should work out well for you. Unfortunately, you can't just make a massive amount of this and then store it because the saponins in this liquid form just degrade quickly over time. So you really do have to kind of think ahead 10 to 20 minutes, set yourself up, and then make this stuff fresh. And it'll probably keep for a day or two, but you don't want to leave it for like months. All right, let's go start some wash. Okay, the final step is we're just gonna stick this in the wash where you would normally put your detergent. If you want it to be scented, you can add some essential oils to it, but it won't naturally come out smelling like anything really. The only other thing to keep in mind is if you have a really tough stain, um, this is not particularly aggressive like some detergents are, it's more of a soap. So it's best to spot clean really tough stains before throwing them in the wash with your horse chestnut soap. I turned it off. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video, and hopefully you'll be off to making your own natural detergent soon.